to Give Me Five Children's and Young Adults Book and Reviews and now Author Interviews. This is a special podcast that is, as it is my first author interview podcast. Today, I have the honor of sharing thoughts with author Maya Wentz, aka Apricot Banks. She is an author of children's books and also she's a teacher and librarian. Hey, Maya, how are you doing? Hi, thank you so much for having me on. Well, I'm an honor. It's an honor. Thank you for being my very first and an awesome <laughs> author that you are. We also did, we also reviewed your book, Marina Royale, as well on our channel. So it's so great to have you here and see the author behind this amazing book that I enjoyed so much. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Well, tell us a bit about yourself. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I'm a teacher librarian in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, I like to write science fiction and mystery and fantasy and uh, kid lit. This is this is my uh, and uh, I love writing uh, for fun. I, I got started writing. Oh, my goodness. I'm one of those people who wanted to write when they were little kids. I used to staple paper books together and <laughs> show them to my mom and um, <laughs> And uh, more recently, I, I uh, serialized a, I think of it as a comedy horror novel on Wattpad, uh, mm -hmm. which is a serial fiction platform. It's international and uh, it actually won a Wadi Award. So I said, okay, wow. let's publish it. So that was my first novel. It's kind of a YA comedy horror. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but my new, my new thing, my new excitement is, uh, Marina Royale, which is yeah. which is a chapter book for for kids. Tell yeah. us more about Marina Royale. Okay, okay. So um, I I guess um, I guess it's the story of a plucky little hermit crab who never gives up, right? Hubert the okay. hermit crab is this little guy who wants to grow up and be a spy, but he's a tiny little crab. He can fit into like a miniature toy soccer ball as a shell. Um, and he likes to use that as a camouflage and go around and spy on people on the beach. Uh, he's, <laughs> he's got some friends. His friends are um, Emma and Aiden, the panicky puffer fish. And he's mm -hmm. best friends with Sparky the dogfish, who's like the most pleasant version of ADHD. He's, he's like Tigger, <laughs> but, a, but a dogfish. And... Um, but he also has to deal with a bully named Olga the octopus. Who's oh, been she bullying. was a bully. He's, she's been bullying him since kindergarten, which, by the way, comes from an episode that actually happened to a real friend of mine. I didn't realize that girls bullied boys in, in kindergarten, but apparently oh, yeah. it's a real thing. It's anyway, a thing. <laughs> it's a thing. Anyway, so uh, what happens is his best friend and Olga and the puffer fish twins, they're all playing cards and um, Hubert wants to join them. And Olga says, you're too, you're too little and you're kind of weird and creepy with your spice thing, go away. <laughs> and so that's the beginning of the book. Um, but it's, um, uh, it's, a, it's a book about a plucky little wannabe spy that never gives up. I like Herbert. He's he's such a character, and I love that he gets to find a very special like spacecraft shell that he can use controls, and he's so much bigger and do things that he never he's never done before. I love the book. It's a great Aww. book. Oh. Congrats! It's amazing. I love it. Thanks. So now all this underwater stuff. Did you do any research for it? Did you have to do research for? Herbert's um, and all right well two things first is I'm kind of obsessed with swimming in water anyway uh, like okay. I, I grew up watching all the all of the documentaries that were shot underwater and I'm a, a competitive swimmer and I love swimming in lakes and pools and you put me in water and I'm just happy you know that's <laughs> my element but um of, I I'm also I'm, I'm a geeky teacher, okay? I love looking stuff up and finding out about, I found out all sorts of things about sea creatures researching this book. And actually when I did the second one, like I have the second one out as well, it's called The Hunt for Red Octopus. And I yes. got to research, I got to research the hagfish. Those things are wild and slimy. So cool. And, mm, so so yeah, cool. 
Yeah, so I, I'm the I'm the little kid who grew up loving monsters and weird things and, and science and animals. And so it was a pleasure to do the research for this, yeah. Do you have to have that imagination to be a creative writer and especially a children's author as well? Because that, well, that reminds me, your first novel is The Feeding Frenzy, Curse of the Necromancer. Yeah. And that's the comic urban fantasy novel. Yeah. It's set on a university campus, right? Yeah. And so I wonder, you go from that to writing children's book. How did that happen? How did that, how did that evolve? You know, it's, it's funny. I just, um, I was, I was, um, it was almost Halloween. And I was thinking about my, my uh, NaNoWriMo novel, which is National Novel Writing Month, where you write a novel in a month. And I was, I, I was, so I planned it in October. I posted the first chapter like October, October 31st, because it's a very Halloween themed uh, book. And I just, I wrote it in a month, but I, po but I edited and, ch and uh, posted one chapter on Wattpad every week. And what was sweet about that was my parents go to Florida in the winter and my mm -hmm. mom would read the chapters as they came out and comment on them. And it was <laughs> just the sweetest way of, of creating something um, that would make her laugh and would, would, you know, give you the shivers and whatever. So I, I didn't actually write it as a YA novel, but it's so yeah. squeaky clean. There's no sex. My mother enjoyed it. So, you know, <laughs> okay. it, you, you, the mom you test. could call it, you could call it YA because, because I've had 13 year olds enjoy reading it, but mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't actually write it for kids. It, it could be mm -hmm. for older people too. Yeah. Wow. So, so now with being on both sides of the fence of writing for teens, young adults, yeah. or, yeah. you know, middle grade and writing for children, which is easier? Is one easier than the other or? <laughs> um, well, uh, there, okay. So I'm a children's librarian. I have been recommending books to kids for my whole career, really. Most of my, because when I wasn't a children's librarian, I was a classroom teacher. So finding the right book for the right kid that matches their interests and matching their reading level at the same time, I know that that's like the most important thing to be able to do. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So, so one of the challenges of writing a chapter book is, first of all, I want it to be short, right? So the kid, the kids can read it in a short time. It's got yes. kind of big print. It's like <laughs> the classic chapter book format, mm -hmm. um, but it has to match the interest yeah, of, sure. of, of that child at their reading level, at that grade level at that time. So is it hard? I would say um, if I didn't love reading chapter books, it would be hard. But like I love Franny K. Stein, you know, the Jim Benton uh, chapter yeah. books for kids with the child. OK, I, I can relate far too much to this character, but um, Franny K. Stein, wannabe mad scientist. Uh, yes. She's a little cartoon, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. or, or Benicula, the vampire oh, vegetable sucking bunny. Like, so was it hard for me to write a chapter book? Yes, because I feel like the standards are very high. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and 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 it it was it's terrifying to to think of all the great chapter books that are out there, and I'm going to add mine to the pile. But is it easier or harder than writing for adults? I would say the same thing that the science fiction writers and the romance writers say when you say, oh, is it easy to write a romance book? Oh, is it easy to write one of those <laughs> rocket books, you know, like Deep Space Nine? You, mm -hmm. you know, if you read it and you love it, you're probably going to be a natural to write that kind of book. But don't try to write the kind of book you don't love. I think. Right. That's, yeah. Yeah, because it comes through in your writing. You, the readers can sense it. It's like they weren't into this book. It's yeah, those books that just kind of end, and it's like what? Yeah, they're just like I'm done with this book. I'm just gonna end it. It's like, and it's not even a cliffhanger. It's just kind of ends. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Oh goodness. So and there and there's a special perspective too, right? Um, uh -huh. 
you know, children's books have to be seen from the point of view of a child. It's written like Huber is my stand in for the, the kid reading the book. Yeah. Right. So uh-huh. they have to be able to see themselves in the book. So how do you promote literacy as a teacher librarian? Uh, how do you get kids to read? How do you get them hooked? Um, well, They're video games, it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, part of it is I just love books. So, you know, I walk little, I walk little primary kids to the library every day to borrow a book and they all say yes let's borrow a book and they're just so excited you know (laughs) and they say to me you know Miss Wentz I love library so part of it is just if you love something and you share it it's easy to promote it right if you really believe in something um Uh (laughs) but right now my school is doing its first ever um I'm running our first ever virtual book fair because we can't under the current current circumstances this is November 28th, 2021, guys. So in, in Toronto, we still don't have fully, fully open school libraries. I'm loaning books to kids, mm-hmm. um, but, but um, we can't have a big jam-packed parents and bo- right. stro- strollers and buggies uh, book fair. So we're doing oh. that online. And the other thing uh, that I... I guess the other thing that I do to promote literacy is um, just, um, you know, I, I, um, I do this club. So I talked to you a bit, a bit about NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the, in the month of November, while I'm writing my novel, after I've done that for a couple of times, I realize, wow, this teaches so many things that kids should learn about uh, growth mindset and uh, little little steps, you know, little little daily steps add up to a, you know much bigger results than you could ever imagine if you if you haven't done something huge but broken it up into little little steps because mm-hmm. until you've written your first novel it feels like a huge challenge like wow I can't do that hmm? just but, the thought <laughs> yeah yeah. So um, what I do with the kids is, and they love this, I can't do it this year, but previous years is we have a computer lab with about 20 something, 30 computers in there. And I just invite all the kids from grade four up to eight into the library for a couple of lunches a week in November uh, and also morning recesses. And they come in and they, they write with their buddies they like to illustrate it. Most of them don't write it longhand. Most of them want to be on the computer. The computer is what makes it fun. They're yeah. working two and three kids in Google Docs on different machines at the same time and having a laugh-tastic time. Some of them write joke books. Some of them write stories. They know that no one's going to read it or grade it. They can write what they want. Yes. But it is a competition. So about 20 minutes before the end of lunch, I'll say, okay, guys, we're going to do a writing sprint and I'll like time them and they'll like just type as fast as they can for five or 10 minutes. They enjoy that. (laughs) Then at the end of the club, um, so at the end of November, we add it up by grade. So it's the fours versus the fives versus the six Ah. versus the sevens versus the eights. And for some reason, for some reason, for about three years running, the fives won. I really I don't, I don't know why the grade fives wrote the most words in November um, so what are they about 11 or 12 11 um, fifth grade 11 12 yeah so if you're in grade five you kind of add five so yeah 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 I, I add <sighs> five or six but um, <laughs> anyway have, the, have the, you um, ever had any students who told you they wanted to write a book and and what advice would you give a young person who wants to be a writer? Yeah, every once in a while, you see someone go through your hands who has an obvious talent. I, um, uh, but I don't think you need an obvious talent to write a book. But yeah, I, every once in a while, you, you, um, you will meet a child who just stuns you with their natural ability and you, you tell them you tell them (laughs) but the (laughs) but the but the other advice I would have is just um just do it enjoy it 
find mm -hmm. friends who like doing the same thing, do it with them. Um, don't worry about uh, anything but just um, the fun of it because mm -hmm. uh, writing really is supposed to be fun the same way that reading is fun. And, um, you know, down the road after they've had uh, some more practice, I think, uh, you know, the publishing industry and also just society needs new voices all the time, needs more oh, representation, yeah. needs mm -hmm. young people because young people always have a new and fresh uh, perspective. So we're never going to run out of the need for no more new writers. And, you know, uh, writing is just a great, it's a great thing to help you with your life, even if you don't get published. Mm -hmm. So just do it. I think just do it sums it up. <laughs> yeah, like Mike Nike, just do it, right? <laughs> you know, and I think... <laughs> kids they they um some of my students were both teachers right when they they want to write a book and they'll write a couple of pages and then they're like teacher how did how did you write such a long book you know so it's the challenges of writing a chapter book and illustrating it so for you what were the challenges of illustrating your chapter book wow yeah it it was a challenge um, because, <laughs> <Right is enough. laughs> yeah, because, you know, drawing a little sketch is one thing, right? But to the, mm -hmm. I, the terrifying idea that um, I would actually illustrate my own book. I mean, yeah, I wanted to design my own characters. When mm -hmm. you're a cartoonist, you, yeah. you, do, you do character design before you even draw the first picture. And yeah. I just, I wanted to have control over my character design. I wanted the, the, the pictures in my head to match the ones on the page. Um, mm. So I did, so I, um, I researched the animals, mm -hmm. you know, like drawing, yeah. drawing from real animals. Mm -hmm. And then I took that and then you look through it. You look at it again through the eyes of a cartoonist to see what's ah. funny, what it would appeal to small kids what um what I personally think is funny because I think I've been told I sometimes have the sense of humor of a small of a of a kid as opposed to an adult sometimes <laughs> but anyway so you so you look at it like a like a cartoonist uh -huh. and yeah. you kind of have to come up with your style for that character mm -hmm. then you have to read the book figure out which scenes you want to illustrate and then you draw your sketches then you scan them into your computer. Then you Photoshop them and add color and backgrounds and all that stuff. Uh, it's, it's fun, yeah. but it takes, I think, I think I took more time on the illustration than writing the book. I think that's mm. probably fair, at least the same amount of time. And then, um, you know, you need to make sure that the illustrations look good in black and white as well as color because oh, really? paper, yeah, yeah well because the the paperback isn't like the covers and but the in, interior illustrations are black and white because right. it, it, it would it would cost too much for people would not buy the book at the price it would be if i did it with color illustrations mm -hmm. yes. um, but the ebook is in color because i i absolutely wanted the pictures to be in color so yeah there, there's a whole challenge there and uh i get better I think I think I get better with both books. So like second book, ooh, pictures, <laughs> ooh. pictures got easier. I got I, I got faster because you know Photoshop has quite a learning curve as well. So I got better at the computer part of it. Bless you, because I can't even draw stick figures well. And for you to have it in your mind and then draw the animals and then Photoshop. Oh my gosh, I just my head explodes thinking about it <laughs> it's it's i think it's amazing stubborn stubbornness i think the key to drawing doing your own illustrations is stubbornness and you just keep termination until, <laughs> until you think it's good enough yeah maya could you show us up close the picture of herbert i just love him so much all right let me find you a herbert picture Ooh, yes maybe i'll show you one from the second book because i've got one uh -huh, okay, so yes i don't what I should do is, um, you know what, before the end, mm -hmm. uh, why don't I get you the color version? Because oh. 
Yeah. So let's the color keep is always always. Why wonderful. don't why don't why don't we keep doing the interview and okay. at the end I'll show you the color. That would I, be can, lovely. I can hold this yes. up, but it's a it's a black and white like here. I'll Doesn't do you. him justice, right? <laughs> I'll show you Olga. Like this is Olga oh, yeah. dragging Hubert away. Oh, she's such a bully. She's such Olga a bully. Was but such you a know bully. Blurry that is yeah. because it, I can see him. But, I can see but him. But I, yes. I can I can put the color book on on the screen for you in it at the end, and you'll be able to. Yeah. So, <laughs> what are what's going on with Hubert the the, her, the hermit crab in the future? Are there more things happening with Herbert? Yeah, so this is this is the hunt hunt for red octopus. This is the second book, yes. and uh, this book I I love this book because okay, a little bit spoiler alert, but at the end of this book, Hubert has done something so heroic, even though he's really really a nervous little dude in his shell. Yeah, uh, he has done something so heroic that he gets invited to saltwater spy school. So this, yeah so which is like the turning point and i've got the next book i've started writing the next book which is called gold stinger because no, i like it because um this gold go, this um gold stinger is a jellyfish who has a crush on hubert but she also oh. has stinging tentacles oh my god so they're friends but you know oh no at, does it keep getting tentacles shot? length <laughs> I can't hold your tentacle. You're gonna shock me. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. I love it. Yeah. So 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 this story is Hubert and his friends. By the end of by the end of Marina Royale, uh -huh. Hubert and and Olga the bully octopus are kind of having a truce because he's kind of proven himself a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. in the second book, that this true story, like when I was a child. I I was bullied by a kid who was like two grades older than me and I had to walk home like at least 15 minutes by myself from from a quite young age oh and kind of scary and I yeah and he was a boy and he was like a head taller than me and what I did was I kind of befriended him like I got him to ask me his difficult uh difficult how to spell difficult words out of his spelling book on the oh. walk home because oh. he because he, he was so much older than me he knew the answers and I didn't get them right so that made him feel smart so he did mm -hmm. feel like he had to you know physically threaten me anymore so now I know not every bullying story has that happy an end mm -hmm. right I mm -hmm. befriended my bully I built up his I built up his self-esteem his ego, and, he, yeah, his and, self and befriended him so that I wasn't terrified to walk home, right? That was very clever of you, I, actually. Well, it, my, the advice from my parents was, you have to make friends with this guy. Mm -hmm. You can't, yeah. you yeah. have to, you know, win him over. So that's what I did. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, kids who are getting bullied, sometimes the best thing to do is get some advice from an older person, as well as Absolutely. getting your getting your friends to be witnesses and telling them to stop, you know, that would have been good, but that wasn't an option for me because I, I lived fairly far from the school and I was alone for most of that walk. Right. But anyway, oh, man. so, so Hubert kind of befriends Olga, wins her over. I'm not so, you know, I'm likable. I, I, yeah. a, I, I deserve my place here. Right. Uh -huh. So they're playing hide and seek in the spooky kelp forest. And the panicky puffer fish have said, you know, there's a ghost ship and it's terrifying. Ooh, All this, yeah. I like ghosts. <laughs> anyway, so Olga's got a little sister who gets lost. Um, or Ooh. actually, he, she just doesn't realize you have to come home and, and hide and go seek. And there's a storm <sighs> brewing and, you know, everybody's worried she's been swept out to sea and Hubert has to hubert saves the day basically okay spoiler alert hubert saves the day but it's 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 great because hubert has a secret weapon uh mm. the, the silver shell that you're talking about like this he is still has little, it in the second book this is I'll, I'll tell you why little kids one reason why little kids love superheroes mm -hmm. they're small they're powerless they want to be 
Superman, Batman, yeah. Spider-Man yeah. and be strong and powerful and nobody can, you know, nobody can um, bully them or tell them what to do. So yeah. my, my, my Huber has a little bit of that little guy superhero in it. So I really, I really enjoyed uh, writing this book and the back of both books have like have activities and jokes for kids because yes. when I originally uh, got the idea for this series it was the first COVID lockdown and I was missing my library kids yeah. I was working virtually from home which is very strange as a librarian and yes I thought, what, what can I do to make the kids happy and give uh -huh. them something to do when they're not online yeah. So the second book has like kick the can in it, which is a game that I played in my neighborhood when I was a kid. And mm -hmm. apparently there's regional variations. So uh, uh, you get my regional variation of kick the can, which we used to play in my neighborhood <laughs> as a kid. Oh, that's and, so cool. Um, yeah, yeah. And some other little other fun stuff for kids in the back. Oh, that is so amazing. I love it. You know, it's just such an adventure for kids. And, you know, I think that children need their inspiration and their little escapes too. And books are never going to go out of style, luckily, right? Even if they're on ebook, I still like holding the physical book. I guess I'm old school and seeing the pictures and, you know, just having that, falling asleep with that book and what will happen to the characters next, you know? But um, that was a great, great idea you had there to keep the kids in lockdown, a little happy and missing your books in the library. I can imagine. And, <laughs> I miss and my I'm, students too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So where can people find out more about you and your stories? Oh, um, yeah. Um, well, if they go to apricotbanks.com, uh, mm -hmm. they can get a free activity book. I have a free ebook that's got uh, some hands-on fun stuff. It's got mm -hmm. jokes. It's got a really silly quiz. Um, it's it's <laughs> so so that would be a, a nice thing kids could get for free. Um, and mm -hmm. if you go to the website, uh, there also has information on the books where to buy them. And you know they're available on Amazon. And like any of them can be ordered through a bookstore because mm -hmm. that's not a problem. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So uh, apricot banks b-a-n-k-s dot com i'll, I'll is put it in the description would, box yeah would you yeah and if yeah. you're interested in feeding frenzy this is okay i'm gonna i'm gonna do the shameless plug here if you if do you it, read yes. if you read urban fantasy or ya this is my this is my uh, yes my novel yes. my first novel uh and <sighs> that it's at mayawens.com which if you can't if 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 this is not backwards We'll tell you how to spell it. I'm not sure yes. if it's coming out backwards on your screen. Yeah. But maybe in the recording it will be right side, right side. <laughs> I don't know. I'll make sure I put everything in the description box below for everybody oh. to find you and your wonderful books. And were you able to queue up some pictures of my favorite character? Yes, but there will be a pause. <laughs> there will be a pause. <laughs> That's Sorry. okay. He's he's worth the wait for sure. I fell uh, in love with the little dude. Thank and I was actually you. mad at Olga for bullying him, but there's always got to be the, the villain, right, in the story. But oh, you I'm know, glad to hear that maybe they're friends in the next one. <laughs> they're they're kind of friends rivals, but I think that's not so unusual in real life. <laughs> no, you're right. It's not. <laughs> and your your story is a good example of that too. <laughs> well, I don't I don't know. I'm kind of a quiet person. And sometimes when I was a kid, you know, you would get jealous of, of other, of people who are more friends with your friends or there's all sorts of little, <laughs> all sorts of little things that go on inside kids, kids. You know, uh, and it really doesn't change from generation to generation. It's still the similar, same problems, just a different setting and an update, you know, I think and it's always really going to be peer pressure and things that kids go through but I love the fact that this little guy like you said um kids can relate to him because he's the one that gets picked on nobody wants him to be around you know he's not the cool kid he's not the cool crab and uh and he winds up 
saving the day and and being a hero and having superpowers and that inspires kids that you know gives them confidence too as well but i'm like you maya when i was five years old i was up in a tree with like 10 books in the backyard of this amazing tree that i would climb up in and i would read for hours and they were like where's elizabeth she's in her tree <laughs> you know it's like right. i preferred books over people you know <laughs> I used to love going up into a tree with my cousin Lisa and telling her horror, basically funny horror stories. Uh huh. Oh of, my goodness. Of, yeah, of like the monster that lived in the bottom of the lake. So I haven't changed that much. All right. the dogfish. <laughs> can, you, can you see that? Yes. Okay. So let's see if you could see the next one. So this is Hubert drawing in his spy notebook yes this is olga when olga sister this is from the second book by the way these pictures uh, are not this is her sister Royal. olga's sister these are from no this is olga when her sister goes missing and ah. you know even a bully loves her sister right of course <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is uh, getting chased by the hagfish Ah, <laughs> I love it. So scary. And this is oh, this is uh, playing hide and go seek in this scary kelp forest. So you got Olga and her little sister, and that Sparky the dogfish, and little mm -hmm. tiny Hubert with his soccer shell. Soccer He's got a soccer shell back on. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> uh, because Olga told him it would be cheating to wear the silver shell. There they are. High five. That's so cute. I love it. I love it. And that's Olga basically <laughs> carrying him away. <laughs> so he was about to he was about to touch home base first. Uh -huh. She was not having that. <laughs> oh no. So she of course but she has the advantage. Look at that, you know. She just grabs him. Yeah. Carries him away. This, uh, so this is Aiden the panicky pufferfish telling them about yeah. all the spooky things that live We're in twins. the spooky kelp forest. Don't play hide and seek in the spooky, <laughs> in the scary kelp forest. And this, of ah. course, is the silver shell. Yes, Hubert has rescued has rescued uh, little Red, and mm. he's zooming home with her before the storm carries them all away so that i want a super show like that <laughs> yeah and that's olga's dad who also has this has salt water he's the principal of saltwater spy school and when he <laughs> he decides to give hubert a, a place at a saltwater spy school and wow. uh, then we really learn why olga's so tough right yeah <laughs> <laughs> she's a spy <laughs> she's like the cia of the underwater world <laughs> she she yeah 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 so this this oh, is um, this is oh. when when uh sparky the dogfish realizes that they've lost little red and he's not quite brave enough to go looking for her in the depths and he's like we've lost her uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> anyway so that's i it. love it yay story time yeah so that's awesome that is awesome thank you for doing that i know that was really impromptu and yeah. everybody will enjoy those pictures so i think everybody should go out if they don't have the books yet and get them and uh <laughs> stay tuned because in the third book i'm looking forward to that one too as well it, one, two and three it's fun to write the third one's fun to write but uh i have to kind of get myself to edit that's the hard part <sighs> yeah did you know that's that's always been my challenge too. I hate editing. I even get to where I've edited so many times. I don't want to read it anymore. <laughs> well, maybe you know, some maybe someday it. we'll uh, we'll trade manuscripts for fun and we can read each other's. You know, that's a fabulous idea. I like that idea. I'll, I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> never, you know what they say? Never write alone. Well, we all write alone, but it's, it's <laughs> right. better to write alone with friends. Yes. <laughs> is that the misery loves company or is that just accountability partners like yes accountability <laughs> yeah <laughs> i love it well it has been fabulous to have you here with me today and thank you for 
just being you and sharing your books with the world. Yeah. And let's do this again sometime. Yeah. When you sure. come up with number three. All yeah. right. Thank you so deal? much. It's been awesome. such a pleasure and so nice to talk to and get to know you a bit better. This has been great. Thank Thanks. you so much. And okay. I, I look forward to speaking with you again in the future. <laughs> okay. Take care. Bye for now. Thank you, Maya. All right. Bye.